Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Neighbor claims he owns my land and put up markers, calls cops on me when caught. I am lucky enough to own a large area of land, some of it being grass and some going into a more dense wooded area. It used to be my grandfather's land so I knew it well and knew exactly what land was mine and what belonged to other people even without fences to dictate it. Now my neighbor on the other hand was not as nice when it came to respecting boundaries and I constantly found him doing things on my land instead of his own. And his land was a much smaller plot of land. He would always claim it to be an accident and then leave, but after a while I knew he was just doing it on purpose. I did not have the patience to deal with him though unless he did something that altered the land. When the day came he tried to dig a path that went through my land, I knew that I had to find the money and get a fence built. If this was an easy story though it would have been short and ended here, but sadly this was only the beginning of the neighbor getting more aggressive with me and his approach to trying to go on my land. After about a month of the fence and no issues, I came home and noticed that something was not right. My fence was on the ground in pieces and there were some property markers on my land claiming that it belonged to the neighbor. I had no idea what happened and my first instinct was to check my cameras to see what the heck happened. It turned out that neighbor took his car and ran over my entire fence to knock it down. Then he came and put up those fake markers claiming that it was his land even though I knew that the land had belonged to my family since the property was bought. It should have been a simple thing of calling the police and getting them to arrest him for trespassing on my land and destroying my fence. So that is what I did and when the police showed up I explained what happened and showed them the tapes. They went to talk to my neighbor and after a little while came back to speak to me. Cop, I talked to your neighbor and he showed me paperwork that shows that that part of the land belongs to him. There is nothing we can do about the fence since from the paperwork we saw it was on his property. He is not pressing charges but I would advise you to stay away from that area. I did not have any official paperwork showing it was my land but I knew that this was fake. The cop told me I basically had to get an official land surveyor to check it out if I wanted to sort things out. So I did just that and like I knew before my land ended right where I thought it did and the land was mine the entire time. When I had that information I knew that he could not stop me from using my own land so I just started acting like I normally would, totally ignoring his signs. I don't know if the first cop visit gave him some fake confidence, but he ended up calling the police on me this time and you could already tell they were not happy to be back. Cop, sir, I was here last week for the same type of complaint. Now he is asking to press charges for trespassing. So I'm going to need you to turn around and put your hands behind your back. Me? I got the land surveyed like you suggested and I have paperwork to prove that I am not trespassing. This stops him in his tracks and tells me to go get it and bring it to him. Now they have two documents that both seem to show the property belonging to different people. They really have no idea what to do now and make a call to try and figure it out. The town has on file though that I requested a surveyor and they were the ones that sent one out. My neighbors one meanwhile cannot seem to be verified at all. Cop said, it looks like that your copy is legitimate and if you still have the footage you can press charges for the trespassing and destruction of property if you want to. Me? Yes, I would like to press charges on him for that. The look on my neighbor's face when he was getting arrested was hilarious because he did not know that I had the land looked at and was so sure I was going to be the one getting arrested. He told the police to just look at his papers and the property markers and they would see that everything lined up fine. They did not listen because he was as good as caught and being arrested. I thought that it would just be him getting a warning or something and it forced to pay me back for my fence. While he was still forced to pay for the fence, he was not just given a simple warning for trespassing onto my property. It turns out that unlike some other stories I have read where building a fence or putting landmarkers on someone else's property led to rather minor consequences, this one had different elements to it. 
He had showed the law enforcement knowingly fake information, having the fake documents that said my land was actually his went further than just simple trespassing. It was called fraud where I lived and fraud in general is a pretty big deal, but since the neighbor was dumb enough to call the police on me and get them involved with it, it became an interesting case. Meanwhile my neighbor had no idea what to do and was trying to cut a deal where if he gave me money for the fence and some for rent of the land he tried to steal, I would drop the charges. I was not going to do that but even if I did it was not going to solve the big problem. While the trespassing was something I was pressing charges for, the fraud was something the government was going after him for. Since that didn't have anything to do with me, I really could not get any more info about the results of that. The only thing I knew for sure was that I got money back to rebuild my fence, which I did. I also can say that I never saw the neighbor again and a few months later somebody new moved into that property. I can only assume that he was either sent to jail or was forced to sell the house just to afford the lawyer to defend him and had to move. Either way, I'm just so glad that he is not living next to me anymore. This was one instance that before I could even try to get revenge on somebody, they just ended up getting revenge on themselves. Nothing I would have come up with would have been as good as him getting arrested because he showed off his fraudulent documents to the police. Who even knows what he did in court in front of a judge to try and defend himself for that one. I love a victory that is low effort on my part but gets amazing results. And yeah ripe stars don't we just love it when an entitled neighbor from hell finally gets what he deserves. In addition if you still enjoy the stories about crazy entitled neighbors then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and maybe also like the video because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. And the next one is a little saga about a couple of awful entitled neighbors from hell. I live with my parents in the UK in Yorkshire and we don't exactly live in the quietest of places. There is always a garden and house party happening somewhere or a screaming match happening in the street. That is entertainment sometimes so we will let that slide. However for the past 5 years our next door neighbors have been an absolute nightmare. When they first moved in it was a couple and their four children ranging from ages 11 to newborn and the noise started more or less straight away. But we did not say anything as we knew it must have been difficult to move houses with four young children so we made friendly interactions. They are pleasant enough to talk to and we have not had any crossed words. But it has now been 5 years and around a dozen different complaints to the local council who won't do anything because that would actually require them to work. People's patience is obviously a little short now with quarantine and the country being on lockdown but there are some days where it is just too much. It starts with little things like putting their dog in the front garden at 7am and letting him bark and howl and they just blatantly ignore him for hours on end. They will have their TV at an unnecessary volume and then they will play music over that. To the point that where you can feel the vibrations on the other side of the house and then they will try to have a conversation over the top of that. There was a spell where they had endless parties including an all night party for their one year old that started at 5 pm and was finally stopped by the police at 4 am. Bear in mind that the one year old whose birthday it was was crying upstairs all night and no one checked on her. When it was first announced that the country was going on to lockdown my dad and I were notified that we were required to work from home. He works for the government so his work is extremely important and I work for a large theater company all of whose theaters closed without notice leaving thousands upon thousands of tickets to be refunded and rescheduled. As well as this I was studying to complete my master degree and had 3 exams, a 25,000 word thesis and a couple of essays to complete from home with no support to resources as well as working my job too. 
Also, I'm the only person in my house who was not on the vulnerable list for the virus. Between the two of them, my parents have diabetes, autoimmune issues, motor neuron problems and are on a number of controlled drugs, some of which were fatally affected by the virus. This meant that I was responsible for getting the necessary shopping for my household, my elderly grandparents and my vulnerable and newly pregnant sibling. So it goes without saying that I was all of a sudden incredibly stressed and overwhelmed. We had spoken to the neighbors just after the lockdown announcement and told them that we obviously don't mind them playing music or watching TV, but if they could just keep it at a reasonable level during the day, both of our work hours were 8 am until 5 pm and the the wife was very pleasant and promised that she would make sure they kept it down and even said that her kids were not allowed outside the front gate out of fear of the virus. This lasted for about two weeks and just when we thought this lockdown period would be okay, things just went back to how they were before. It's worse at night because their four-year-old daughter just dominates the house, charging around the house all hours of the night, no exaggeration, but sometimes it sounds like a herd of elephants charging around. She will scream and cry and shout for hours and there does not seem to be anyone trying to tell her to stop or calm her down if she is upset. The three boys will be playing on their consoles all night and their TV must be fitted to their wall, which I just so happen to share and all you can hear is the game audio and then their screaming and shouting. The music has slowly started to creep back on, getting earlier and earlier every day and now it is at a point where the music will turn to at 11am and we have to repeatedly knock and ask them to turn it down, which they will for about an hour and then it will slowly increase in volume again. I have lost count of the number of times I've had to terminate a phone call with a customer because I cannot actually hear what they are saying. I've been in the middle of Zoom meetings with my managers and they have had to ask me if I can move to a different room because they can hear the music and on one occasion my webcam was actually vibrating along with the music. They constantly break the lockdown restrictions and go and visit their family and leave the house for half the day, while leaving their music on loud and the oldest son will have his girlfriend, her toddler son and his three or four other friends over at night and they'll be going in and out of other people's houses without much care. The most annoying thing about that is that his girlfriend is a nurse at the local A&E, so she is exposed to the virus all day and they just don't seem to think that could be dangerous to her child or our neighbor's kids. They now have a newborn who was born two months prematurely, so has a lot of health complications. There have been times where we have been tempted to play them at their own game and put music on or have the TV loud, but we are not that petty and we don't want to become a bad neighbor for someone else. This post serves more as a rant and vent because clearly talking to the neighbors and the council has proven useless. Also, I recently started my recruitment process to join my county's police force, so obviously this kind of disturbance is not ideal, especially if I'm going to be working 12 or 13 hour shifts day and night. And so I am currently looking to move into my first home by myself and I'm going to make sure that there aren't any neighbors like them around before I move. There have been times where we've been tempted to play them at their own game and put music on or have the TV loud, but we are not that petty and we don't want to become a bad neighbor for someone else. This post serves more as a rant and vent because clearly talking to the neighbors and the council had proven useless. I have recently started my recruitment process to join my county's police force, so obviously this kind of disturbance is not ideal, especially if I'm going to be working 12 slash 13 hour shifts day and night. And so I am currently looking to move into my first home by myself and I'm going to make sure that there aren't any neighbors like them around before I move. Update number one to the story, update from my previous post, after finally having enough of not being able to even have a half day's work and the council not doing anything to help us, I decided to have a polite conversation with my neighbor which basically went like this. Me, I don't have any issues with you playing music or your kids playing outside, but all we ask for is that you keep it at a reasonable level. Some of us are trying to work from home and it's making it hard to get anything done. Neighbor, well, I don't have a job, so I don't need to work from home. Me, but I do. Neighbor, and I don't. Me, just because you don't have to work from home does not mean that others aren't. Neighbor, no, I get that, but I don't have to work from home, so... Me, as the neighbor slowly closes the door in my face, I literally don't know what to say to that. 
As soon as I set foot back inside my front door, the kids were outside playing football and screaming and the music went on full blast. We've gotten the community police involved about the lockdown breaches, but they don't seem interested either. Update 2 to the story, this is the third update to my ongoing issues with my inconsiderate neighbors. So yesterday I had an incredibly important job interview, it was my final interview with my local police branch and if I passed this interview, then the past 6 months of training and tests would have been worth it and I would be a full-time police officer. My interview was 3 hours long and I had a time slot for 10 am to 1 pm. I had deliberately picked this time slot as I thought an earlier one would mean there would be less chance of noise from any of my neighbors. 7.30 am, next door neighbors music is on full blast, no warning, so I was already startled from a rude awakening. This came after not being able to get to sleep until 3 am because the same neighbors were having a party. Less than 4 hours sleep and a 3 hour interview coming up. Safe to say I was not amused, however I thought that I would give them the benefit of the doubt and give them time to turn it down. It got to 9 am and it was still going and now the kids were screaming and running around outside having to shout louder than the music just to be heard. So I sent my neighbor a text just politely asking them to turn the music down, not off as I had my interview in an hour. It got to 9.30 am and I had no reply and the music was steadily getting louder. So I went and knocked on their door and of course they could not hear me above the music so I had to knock on their window and more or less felt like I was invading their home. The wife answered, the same woman I texted and she was oblivious to the fact that I had texted her and unbelievably she did not seem to think anything was wrong with the level of music. I asked if she would turn the music down and she said that she would but if she could not stop her partner from turning it up again, if he wanted to, they were having another party as it was their son's A level results day and he had done well. I told her that as nice as that was, I had an important interview that I could not rearrange and could not afford to not get. Her response was a shrug and she said she would turn it down a bit. Thanking her, I went back home and immediately noticed that the music had turned, so I was a bit happier. I sat up in my kitchen and makeshift office and sat down to wait 15 minutes until my interview started. I could still hear the music and the screaming, but it was enough that I could drown it out. The interview was going well until about 10.30. And I think you can guess what happened. Music whacked back up to full volume, even louder than before. All of the neighbors doors and windows are opened, the kids are screaming louder than ever and everyone is now standing outside in the garden and talking loudly right by my kitchen window. I tried not to let it get to me, but when I saw one of the guys doing it to interview, look confused and distracted, I know that they could hear it too. I immediately apologized and explained what had happened and said that I could move to another room and carry on. So I had to move from a proper office setup to my small and partially decorated dark living room. The interview went ahead, but I could not focus properly as all I could feel was their music thumping and I was now getting migraine. I had to ask them to repeat questions numerous times and I just could not drown out the music and the screaming. The interview finished at 1 pm and at 1.15 pm it suddenly went silent from next door. The whole family and their friends, there was about 20 people there all together, left the house at the same time. They 100% did it on purpose and I just found out this morning that I did not pass the final interview and I have to wait 6 months before I can apply for the police again. And to run more salt into the wound, I have to do all of the tests and interviews that I had already passed all over again. I have appealed the decision and have further explained the circumstances so hopefully they are lenient. I'm planning on confronting my neighbors today after I have calmed down, so there should be an update on how that goes. Update 3, this is a pretty short but progressive update, I appealed the decision the police made regarding my interview and that is still in consideration. I also confronted the wife about what happened that day and she played ignorance. She claimed that she did not realize I had an interview even though I texted her and knocked on her door and spoke to her. She even tried to claim that I was the one playing my music loudly as someone who gets chronic migraines about twice a day that is near enough impossible. Also the council have been in touch and have asked me to keep a diary of every time my neighbors are disruptive or a nuisance, it has been a week and I've already filled one side of the sheet. I'm currently sitting in my car typing this as I've had to get out of the house for a bit. 
At 9 this morning the eldest son set up his DJ decks in the front garden under a cover as there is a torrential downpour currently and he started playing music at a reasonable level while working on the garden. A bit strange saying as it has rained for the past 15 hours and then at 10.30 about a dozen of his friends came over with multiple crates of beer and a mini barbecue. From then until now, 16.30, they've been blasting their horrendous MC music and drinking heavily, some of them barely look 16, never mind 18. Last night they had a party for their baby's first birthday and this consisted of about 20 adults all drinking and shouting in the garden until 2 in the morning while the kids ran outside my house. They climbed over their own fence and into my garden to play tech. Today my dad has had to take a risk and drive into his office for his important meetings today as he can't hear anything over the phone. Obviously during a pandemic and when living with someone who is high risk as well as having a sister who is 33 weeks pregnant, the last thing he should be doing is going into the office when they have all been told to work from home. I have to continue recording their noises for another week and send it back to the council and hopefully they will eventually do something about it. I'm hoping that things will be better from next week as the schools are reopening fully again so hopefully things might quiet down a bit. Final update, it is now 2022 and I can happily say the awful neighbors finally got evicted. Years of audio and video evidence collected by me and other neighbors finally led to them getting evicted and everyone in the neighborhood is happy about it.